good evening friends i hope you are all happy alive and kicking i'm just going to make a small video on rahul gandhi now it is important to understand rahul gandhi in the sense that he is one of the important leaders of india and he is also a descendant from the first indian prime minister jawaharlal nehru so one thing is very clear that he is an important figure and also he leads the congress party this known as the grand old party but in 1947 gandhi had recommended that this party be disbanded but that time the people didn't feel that gandhi should be disbanded that is the congress leaders and so the party continued probably gandhi had a reason that the party should be disbanded because a party which has been agitating for freedom all the time probably is not the right party to lead india forward there were change circumstances but gandhi at that time had lost his sway like he accepted party gym so he accepted this also in a conflict now the situation is that since 19 2014 the bjp led by narendra modi is in power and they've been there for the last 9 years and next year the election will be again and the congress will be hoping that it will do better than the two digit it earned in the last two elections in 2014 they earned i think 44 seats and they made a marginal improvement in 2019 when they were 50 seats but all the time they could not even win 10% of the seats which is almost 55% 55 seats to qualify their leader as the leader of the opposition now why should this decline have taken place there was a time when nehru when he was in power the congress party would win 350 seats or more in each of the elections in which he was at the helm but then it has been a downhill and except for the time when uh, rajiv gandhi won an election in 2000 1984 after the sikh riots and he created a fierce psychosis and the congress was over 400 seats apart from that the congress has been hard pressed to cobble up number of seats in parliament so obviously it's very right that he should think that i should come into power again but the way he's going about it is not conducive for the party to succeed the first thing which uh, strikes me is his complete detachment lack of touch with what the indian people aspire see every country has the majority which aspire for something and in india we have a hindu majority i am repeatedly saying that for almost 900 years of indian history the hindus were ruled either by the moguls or the turks and they themselves were reduced to a second class citizenship they paid the jizya tax and their women were abducted taken away as an required and they had lost the will to reform the days of karishik or chandragupta to finish it was now total dismal desolation <clears throat> so this renaissance in hinduism was to take place and it was articulated through the bjp and it's just a matter of chance that modi was at the helm of the bjp if there had been another leader from the bjp who had been at the helm this hindu force would have been generalized even to that man so basically it is the renaissance of hinduism and i won't be surprised if india is declared as a hindu rashtra in days to come and there's nothing wrong with it because the hindu rashtra is based on dharma this was the core principle of the time when ram ruled india or kanishk ruled india or chandragupta ruled india or even ashok ruled what is dharma dharma is truth in which everybody is equal so hindutva 
is almost like dharma. I don't think in my heart it's going to suffer, nothing going to happen, it's going to be the same, except the Hindus will be able to plan out or chalk out what they want to do in their own land, which they have not been able to do for a thousand years. Though I will say, after the Mughal rule, the British rule was much better in the sense that the Hindus were able to get a semblance of self-respect. The British treated everybody equally and there's no question of anybody being jizya or anything like that. Hindus got the same preference as what the other uh, communities got. So, it was best times. Hindus flourished during the days of the Raj. So now, after 47, when uh, conflict came into power, it was dominated by pseudo-secularists. When I say pseudo-secularists in the sense, they equated secularism with appeasement, appeasement of the minorities. This is something ingrained in Hindu thought, that whatever has been happening or did happen, it was the will of God, it was the will of I mean, it's the will of God that everything was done like that. So next result was, the Muslims were pampered in India. The laws were not applied to them. And they began to harbor separatist thoughts. And since India was divided into a two-nation theory, in which Gandhi also accepted that India will be divided on the lines of religion, with Pakistan being created out of India as a Muslim majority state, obviously the the reverse is that India becomes a Hindu state. But at that time, Pandit Nehru and other leaders of the Congress party had their say and they made India into a secular state. Nothing wrong with it. Very nice. But secularism means equal law for everybody and that was not followed in India. Secularism in India meant appeasement of the minorities. So they could have four wives, polygamy, divorce, Muslim personal law, all that is acceptable because this is secularism. And for Hindus to make all sorts of laws, even all the Hindu temples are taken over by the government, while the Muslims have their own administration for the mosques, which is known under the Waqf boards, why should it happen? So the Hindus were looking for a change, and this is what I'm coming to, and now there is a renaissance, which was started by Savarkar, and then there's Mahara Savarkar, and there's no doubt he wrote a letter to the uh, governor Delhi saying, Ki, I'm your humble servant. But that is politics. I mean, that is his game. And he got what he wanted because he was released. So it's not something you can hold against about. But at the same time, his brand of Hindutva is not what I follow or what I believe in. I believe in a renaissance of the Dharma. The Hindu who were ruling when Kanishk and other kings, Hindu kings of the great Vikram Ditya or the Gupta dynasty were in power, which is known as the Golden Age of India. Everybody is equal that time. Now this is something which Gandhi is not able to realize and he's still harping on old theories. He's talking of uh, bringing back Article 317 in Kashmir. He's soft on China because there are various allegations against him as far as China is concerned. He's not even aggressive at Pakistan. He's aggressive only on the BJP and he's talking all the time of division of India. The India BJP has divided India. I do not see how it, BJP has divided India as two governors who have been appointed both in Kerala and Andhra Pradesh are Muslims and both are very prominent leaders. So it doesn't stand to, to reason that the Congress should keep talking of a division of society, there is no division. The division was accentuated by the Congress. That is the fact. By pandering to the Muslims as a vote man. If they were really that much concerned about the Muslims, they would have increased their level, education levels, given them jobs, brought them into the mainstream of life, which they didn't do. They were building up world banks to keep winning elections. Like Mamta Banerjee is doing now, she is building up Muslims as a vote bank because the Muslims that she 30% of the population in Bengal and she is very confident she will get that 30% and all she requires is 20% of the Hindu vote and she says it apart. 
Now, when you have this sort of calculations going on, this is what the Congress were doing. Uh, there is no end in sight. But then, you know, there's an old saying, every day is not Sunday. So, Nehru was winning, yes. Indira Gandhi also won. And Rajiv Gandhi won on the back of massacring thousands of Sikhs. But now, it's not going to happen like that. The situation is entirely different and I wish Rahul Gandhi had realized it instead of going around looking like Karl Marx, you know. I mean, he's keeping a beard these days, moving around and look. And I sometimes saw his photograph and I thought, yeah, he looks like Karl Marx. Now, Marx is the author of a failed economic theory. And by looking like Karl Marx, I feel he is another man who's propounding a failed type thesis that there's a division in Indian society created by the BJP, where actually the creation is by the Congress. So Rahul Gandhi, will he come back to power? He started the Rahul, uh, the famous uh, Jodo Yatra, you know, Bharat Jodo Yatra, I mean, join the Indians. And a lot of people flocked to it. And uh, I would say there were a lot of them were hired people also brought in. Some of the leaders went and joined in thinking they're going to oppose the BJP and make Rahul the leader. But Rahul is not accepted as a leader by the opposition. Nitesh doesn't accept him. Mamta doesn't accept him. K.C. Rao doesn't accept him. Who accepts him? Nobody. Other than a category of small leaders who are well close to 80s in the Congress party. And none of the people who are supporting Rahul in the Congress has got elected to stand on. Dick Vijay saying he can't win an election himself. You take any leader, Kamal Pranath, no way, and in the next election, Gallup is going to be wiped out. The Congress has been wiped out in Punjab. They're going to have a tough time in Kerala this time. So, where exactly is Rahul heading for? The general feeling has come into the minds of the people that Rahul is a man who still feels that India should go back and be governed by the 1935 Indian Governance Act passed by the British. He wishes to keep watertight compartment still. Let the Muslims have the personal code. Don't trouble them. Trouble them means by his method. That is, let them do what they feel like. And he is the man who went around stating that you must not re-bring in uh, the terrorist acts in India. At the moment, there is no terrorist act in this country when the terrorists are moving freely. The Congress party could not stop the mouse for the last 50, 60 years. So all this is very sad, uh, way, the way Rahul is going about it. And unfortunately, you know, uh, one thing must be clear, that the crowds which are flocking to the meetings of uh, the Bharat Jodo march of Rahul Gandhi will not translate into books. And this is a known fact that crowds come for curiosity. They go in, enjoy, see what's happening, but when it comes to the vote, there's no guarantee they're going to vote for the Congress party. On the national level, I don't talk of the state level, on the national level, there is no man at the moment who can match Narendra Modi's charisma and leadership. He's given a lot of spunk, a lot of muscle to the Indians. And for once, I go abroad very often and I find there's some more respect for the Indians than it was ever there during the time of the stooge of the Congress. Manmohan Singh. Unless said about him better because he's a man who uh, really let down the Sikhs. He was a Sikh. And yet he went and joined the same party which massacred 10,000 Sikhs. Has Manmohan Singh anything to say about it? How come he went and joined the same party which killed 10,000 Sikhs in a program which was nothing short of a genocide? I think after 1947 there had been no bigger genocide which are organized by the Congress party, then the genocide of the Sikhs. Anyway, 
Nobody has been punished for it other than two or three people here and there. So what happens is the Congress remained in power for the next uh, 30 years after the massacres of 84 and everything has gone into limbo. It's past history. Hardly anybody has been prosecuted. It's a shame that 10,000 people should be killed and half a dozen people should be convicted for it. Well, gentlemen, I do not think the Congress stands any chance whatsoever of coming back to power. And this is something which Mr. Gandhi must realize. He has to change his tune, sing a different tune, a nationalistic tune. Look at the aspirations of the majority community and there's a chance he could make himself relevant. Otherwise, there's every chance Rahul Gandhi will become the irrelevant man of Indian politics. I close now, gentlemen. Wish you all the best and hope you subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, like it. I close now. Take care. God bless. Jai Hind. Glory to India.